One of the most debated and controversial topics in the field of psychology has been that of intelligence. Psychologists have been arguing about intelligence for decades and decades, um, whether it's arguing over how to define intelligence, how to measure or capture intelligence on different kinds of tests and assessment, um, how intelligence is organized or what contributes to intelligence, and there's been arguments about racial and ethnic differences in intelligence, as well as sex differences in intelligence. Overall, intelligence has been a really hot topic throughout psychology's history, and these debates are still going on today. Now, in the next section of reading, we want to introduce you to intelligence, um, what we know about um, how we define it, um, some different prominent theories on intelligence, and give you a basic idea of IQ tests. Um, how do they work? Um, what do we know about their strengths and weaknesses? Are they valid? Do they predict future success? We're gonna get into all of that in the next section of reading, but I'd like you to just take a minute to engage in this activity. And I want you to just think for a moment, maybe jot down some ideas on paper, but just kind of coming into this class without a strong background in psychology for many of you, when you hear that word intelligence, what do you think of? Can you give examples of different kinds of thinking and behavior that you would classify as intelligent? And then I would also like you to think about your opinion on IQ tests. Do you think that we can trust the numbers that we put on an individual's intelligence through different IQ tests and assessments? So take a second to just jot down your own ideas on these two points. Okay, and if you need more time, go ahead and just pause the video. Okay, intelligence is a tough um, term to define. Okay, hopefully through your thinking and brainstorming, you may have come up with a couple of these different components that are all factored into the definition of intelligence. Okay, clearly it's intelligent to be able to learn from your own experience to acquire knowledge, right? To learn new things and pick up new skills and abilities. It's also intelligent to be able to use resources effectively that are available in your environment so that you can adapt to new situations and solve problems. Okay, can you use the tools and resources available to you in an effective way? Intelligence is a really hard term to neatly and precisely define. Since earlier in the reading, you were exposed to concepts and categories, um, intelligence is actually a prototype, okay? A prototype is a fuzzy category. It's hard to nail down specifically what counts as being intelligent and what doesn't. Now, to add further complexity to this issue is that, you know, your environment is going to, in many ways, dictate what counts as intelligence or not. You know, intelligent behavior, if you're living in the Amazon rainforest, may look different than if you're living in New York City, right? The different resources available to you and the different kinds of problems that you have to solve vary depending on the environment that you're situated in. But overall, if we can put together a working definition of intelligence, it's the ability to learn from your experiences, pick up new knowledge, and to use tools and resources available to you effectively. Now, in the reading coming up, you'll learn more about um, how we measure intelligence, okay, a little bit of the history of intelligence testing. Be sure to carefully read over the concept of mental age, okay, and the IQ quotient. You'll learn how the IQ score was developed, and you'll learn a little bit more about the history of intelligence testing um, in um, in the United States in particular.